Hello everyone. Today we're going to have an introduction to inline assembly language in Visual Studio. Uh, the very first thing you need to do is to install uh, Visual Studio 2019, which is the current version. I simply go to visualstudio.microsoft.com and uh, it's right here on the page. So you want to choose the community to give you the free version. And I'm not going to go through the process of installing that. It's just a matter of clicking on it and installing. What you should end up with is you should be able to go to the search bar in Windows 10. This course will run on different versions of Windows as well, but we start up Visual Studio. And we should be able to you should see uh, Visual Studio here and you should be able to create a new project. So uh, if you haven't, so I've got some existing projects here. Uh, if you haven't, if this is the very first time you're on the program, there aren't going to be any listed here. But um, we can click on New Project and what you're interested in is the C++ console application. And uh, like it says, it allows you to create a program that runs in a Windows terminal or, or in other words, a Windows command line. And uh, this will get you started very quickly and then we'll show you how to add the uh, assembly language as part of the C++ program. So let's make sure this is highlighted and then we click on Next. And then we're going to create a project name here. We'll just call it in. And that's going to become the project and the solution name. And of course, you can put this wherever you'd like on your machine. The uh, actual path doesn't really matter. But come over here and click Create. And that will, Visual Studio is going to go through the process of setting up all the files you need to to run the uh, C++ code in this particular case. So over here on the right we have the Solution Explorer, uh, which again are these are all the files that are associated with that particular project. And the over here on the left is the code window, and you can have multiple open. The they will um, they will tile across the screen up here. So this is the in.cpp program, which is the only program that's uh, part of this particular project in this case, in.cpp, uh, even though, so you really don't see a whole lot. Of, there's some dependencies in here, really don't have any kind of resource files. So again, source files, this is the only file associated with this program. Up here at the top are, the, uh, of course, the menu items and the, uh, the different icons associated with working with the IDE. So as I said, the IDE goes and creates, so again, our, our template in this case, our design template was a C++ program. So it's gone and set up a C++ program which requires uh, just a couple of basic things. We need to have it include that defines uh, this standard, uh, the standard uh, C out method, and part of any program in C++ it has to have a uh, a main it, main which is the main function, and that's going to be the the function that is executed when the program starts. Now, uh, in order to do assembly language in here, we simply have to add the a line of uh, code that tells the compiler that we want to do assembly language. So we do underscore underscore ASM and then we put it inside of curly braces. So and now we're ready to enter our very first line of assembly assembly code and what I'm going to do is do a move. Say so move and we'll use the AL register and we will put the value of 5 into the AL register. Now uh, generally C and C++ wants you to put a semicolon and the uh, the assembly language doesn't really require that but if you put one in here it's going to do a better job of formatting each line of assembly so you might as well just enter the um, the semicolon after every line just so that everything looks nice and neat and we can have uh, add another line of code another register BL and we'll set that to say 2 
And so if we want to execute this, we simply can come up here and click on the uh, green play button. And we're going to be executing an x86 or 32-bit program, and we are in debug mode. So if I go ahead and click on the uh, green play button, it has just executed the code, and it has uh, created a, showed me the terminal window, and uh, it's also showing the output from that uh, that program. It, you can't, we didn't really do anything to print out the assembly language code, but the that uh, C outline we had there printed out hello world and the uh, option we have an option here of making sure that the uh, terminal window stays open it requires you to press a key before it closes and this is actually very nice because if you didn't have this uh, the window would just open very quickly and close very quickly so fast that you wouldn't be able to see what was happening so that's actually a nice feature but you can turn that off if for some reason you don't want to see that you don't want it to stop or you can add your own code to make it make the uh, program stop in this window after it's done executing so press any key to, to exit now um, what's part of this IDE or integrated development environment this is Visual Studio is a uh, includes everything you would need to create and debug code so we've just looked at the editor portion of it um, and we've just executed some code but we can also debug this code and it includes some nice debugging features um, one of the things we can do is add a breakpoint so the way I just did that was by clicking over here in this gray area we're able to just click on it and it's going to create a red dot so, I, so the last time we executed it, it just ran all the way through, and um, so we weren't really able to see what the individual lines of code are doing, but it just very quickly executed those. So if I add a breakpoint, I can have the debugger um, go through the process of showing me individual lines of code so that I can uh, see exactly what's going on on each particular line. So let's try that again with the breakpoint. Of course, note that we can add any number of breakpoints at any line, at any actual line of code. You can't put a breakpoint at a, at a blank line. So the, the code executed, uh, but it's stopping before this very first line of code, assembly code. Um, all of the C++ setup it has actually happened and we've stopped right here before. Uh, note that this yellow arrow indicates the next line of code that's going to be executed. So this has not executed just yet. And we also have a registers window here which um, assemb the key to assembly language is all the registers. The registers are the storage areas uh, for the state of the, what the processor is working on. So uh, in order to do anything in in the processor, we have to have registers, again, just memory locations that keep track of what's going on. Now, uh, as we said, this is a 32-bit a program, so we're going to have 32-8-byte uh, register sizes here, and... Um, this this window here allows us to see each and every one of those uh, registers. In order to turn that on, which would normally be off when you start the program, you need to go into debug. And of course, you have to be in. You have to have started a debug. Um, start to start have started a debug execution. You have to be in the debugger running it before you can turn on the registers window. So uh, we can just go to debug windows and registers or hit control alt G. And that how, that's how you turn that on. So uh, as we said, we started where the next line of code to be executed is this line. And we can uh, step into that line of code. And what we'll see is that this uh, individual line here has made a change to the register the uh now we don't know what the values of the registers are going to be 
before we set them up. And in most programming languages, you generally have to initialize your variables. So our registers in this case are our variables in assembly language. And we can see here that the um, the IDE has highlighted by by setting the about, uh, setting the color to red, indicating which of these registers have changed. So EAX and EIP have all have both changed uh, due to the execution of that one line of assembly. And uh, we see that the very first byte has been set to five, and that AL register is the first byte of the EAX register. So individual registers are composed of the, we have the L for the lowest byte, the next byte would be H. So this is AH, since this is an A register, A register, and then the, uh, the AL and the AH register in this particular case uh, make up the, uh, the AX register. And then the whole 32-bit register is uh, this entire thing here, which again indicated EAX. So again, note that a, a change to one, they're all really part of the same thing. Um, so really a change to one generally causes a change to the other. And uh, now if you want to see these separately, we could use this uh, watch window down here. So we can say uh, AL, AH, AX, EAX. And we can do the same kind of thing for uh, the, the BX register as well. So we can watch these values and it'll, it'll show us these values changing in real time. So um, now let's add some additional code. We're gonna, in order to stop debugging, stop the program from running, we could just continue it all the way to the end or we could just kind of interrupt it and say, tell it to stop. Let's, let's add some uh, math a math function. So we've initialized the variables AL and BL. So now let's try to do an addition. So we're going to add uh, AL to BL. And in this case, as we said that the, uh, the instruction, the way instructions work in assembly language is that the, they move information from right to left. So if we, so in this case, uh, five was moved over to the into the AL register, and here two was moved into the BL register. In this case, we're going to say, let's add the value of AL to the value of BL, and then place the 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 result of that addition into the AL register. So let's step through that process. So here we go. The uh, we've again the breakpoint has stopped us at that very first line. We step uh, into that first line of code, and then the our our uh, our uh, debugger arrow, our next line of code to be executed, is the second line, and we see that we've e the e the AL register has been changed to five, and the EIP has changed now. And the EIP is going to be different every time you execute the, the program, uh, but they will it will change uh, so it'll increment by about the same amount depending on the it'll increment based on the size of the instructions. So in this case, uh, we'll see that that's going to uh, increment it increments by two bytes in that particular case. So the uh, second line of code changed the EBX register, or actually only the BL, the lowest byte of that register. And of course our EBX, I'm sorry, the EIP register changed at incremented by two, as we said. And so that's the second line. So as you execute the third line, we had five in the AL. And note too that you can use the cursor and move uh, over these individual elements so you can see in the code what the particular, the values of these individual registers are uh, simply by moving around. 
So we had, uh, as I started to say, A L was set to five, B L was set to two, and then we're supposed to add A L and B L and place the result of that addition into A L, and we can see now that the value of A L is seven. And uh, now, in, and this of course is, it was being, if you noticed, the changes were being reflected in the watch window down here. And also too, you can come into the watch window and we can turn off the hexadecimal display and these will all be uh, displayed as integers now, which sometimes can be handy to uh, uh, make it easier for your program to understand your program uh, based on the uh, the decimal as opposed to the default hexadecimal values. And, and you really can't change it up here in the registers window. So that's why this watch window is pretty handy. Now, um, another thing that we can do is to look and see what um, what assembly language does is it's a hu human readable version of machine code which are simply the numbers that the CPUs uh, able to execute. So the uh, what's happening here is our the IDE goes through the process of assembling. When we're talking about assembly code, we use an assembler to convert that code into machine code, and compilers are used uh, to for high-level languages like the C++. So we are, we're inside of our C++. We we have a assembler that that converts the code into the machine code and we can see what that machine code looks like simply by going into that debug again we have to be in the debugger for this to work and we can go see uh, the disassembly so it's opened another tab up here uh, and it's uh, showing us the the uh, individual codes now <clears throat> The, uh, this is basically just showing us the location in memory, which uh, is reflected in this EIP uh, register here. But in order to get a little bit more detail, we need to right click in this window and we're gonna say, let's show the code bytes in addition to just the memory, uh, the memory addresses. So in this particular case, the uh, values that make up this move al comma five is uh, the value b zero five, and for the move bl comma two is b three comma two, and the add instruction is two and c three. So uh, the there's a different encoding value. You notice that these values are different. So we're talking about this is a first byte is a code for this move op code, the move al op code, and then we have another uh, byte value that reflects this five constant. Same for there, and the so the al uh, the add instruction in this case is is actually is two bytes, um, and we're ref it reflects the so this al and bl uh, addition is made up of zero two c three. So again, we have a unique uh, value in memory for each one of these uh, instructions. And again, this, this type of, this display, the assembly, is really only human readable. So you can write some assembly language code and we don't have to try to remember all these numbers. It's a lot easier than doing machine code. But ultimately, the only thing that the computer or CPU understands are these numbers loaded into memory. And that's it for now. We will go into some uh, more aspects of assembly language later.